Hey guys, Sensei Craig from Samurai Virtual Dojo, welcoming you to our pre-recorded intermediate slash advanced training session for this week. Um, over here, you'll uh, be able to check out the warm-up, pop it in the description as well. Uh, so let's get warm quickly, because we have a ton of stuff to do today. See you back here in a moment. Os. Welcome back, hope you're warm. So we're gonna start the session today with some work on certain elements of the beginner or beginning kata, Pinan Yonda. So the fourth kata from our Pinan series, specifically some of the uke movements. Okay, so to start with, we'll do a quick review of Shuto Uke, or this knife hand deflective action this way. Okay, so. Oi! Make sure your feet, make sure your feet are nice and straight. Connect your legs, tighten your core. Good. And hand forward. Remember when blocking Shuto to wind up like so, with that knife edge cutting across the body this way. As the block extends, keep the thumb out and then turn, turn the hand at the end. That's what gives the block its deflective quality rather than that slamming, uh, jamming action, which is more of a, a blocking, shielding action or, or an atame action, an attacking action, which we don't specifically want a lot of the time. Okay, from here, ready? It's wind up, knee down and turn at the end. Itch, knee, and then turn. Itch, knee, good. Itch, knee, itch, knee. One more, itch, knee, good. To one count. Itch, knee, san, yon. Go, ro, nana, hatch, ku, ju. Good, and relax. Okay, so let's give that movement some context in relation to Pinan Yondan. So, in Pinan, at the beginning of Pinan Yondan, we turn to the left into Nekoashi Dachi and we block Shuto. Of course, the, the Hikite has this iconic position here. Now this position here, the knuckles, the knuckles on that Hikite are right next to the corner of my eye that way. So, in some schools of thought are that I am winding this hand up to strike and this hand is blocking. And some schools of thought, alternate schools of thought are that this is a deflective movement itself, that I am, that I'm grabbing a strike as that it's coming past, and I'm capturing it with this hand and striking with this hand. So rather than this being a shuto deflection, this is a shuto strike. Okay, and as we know about uh, bunkai or interpretation of movements from kata, um, there are as many interpretations of movements in kata as there are instructors' opinions. So, not to say that any of them are right or wrong, um, it's just that different, different instructors have different theories about these things. Okay, so with our shuto, we want to make sure that as we, as we turn into cat stance from here, that that wind up is occurring. So we don't want to be turning and then moving our hands. It's a very novice thing. So from this position, how does that look? We place our foot to turn. As we, as we turn the hips and the feet, let me just move back a little bit. As we turn the hips and the feet, your left hand winds up and your right hand should come forward. And then that way, it can pull back afterwards. From that position there, make sure 
sure you're getting that nice action there as you pull back. Same when I move across. So when I turn 180, I put my front foot across. As I turn, my hands turn as well. So as you can see, I've got this hand that was blocking on this side, winding up on this side, and this hand here has now turned and come into that wound up position so that it can then perform the shudo movement. So let's have a look at that in action. So from here, I look, place my foot, wind as I turn and perform that correct action. And I put my foot across, turn and wind my hands and then perform that correct action there. Very good. So I would like you to practice that quite a few times until you have, well, I'd like to say perfected to a certain extent, until you have perfected or got that action working really nicely, that deflective action on your block there in the cutter itself. So how many times? Well, I'd like you to practice that sequence that chapter 10, 15, possibly 20 times. When you've done that, see you back here. Okay, the second, I guess, uh, action or piece that we're going to look at in Pinan Yondan today is we fast forward through a bit of the kata, almost to the, the halfway point. We're going to look at this section here and just uh, break down what's happening. So basically we've got a shuto strike, again, using the knife, edge, the knife edge of the hand, and we're striking moashi, so circular, we're striking shuto into the opponent's neck here, into their carotid artery. Strike that way. This arm here, covering the head. So a deflective or a blocking action. Okay, now as we know, in Pinan Yonda, that movement is performed from here. So I have just struck Empyuchi with my, or in this case, my left elbow into my right hand this way. I'm right leg forward, Zen Kutsudachi. From this position, I'm going to step forward with my left leg towards the shoulder. Okay. I'll come towards the camera so you can see. So I step forward with my left leg. Now this left arm that performed the MP it simply comes around and across a little. Think of it like Agi UK, except that the hand and the arm, the forearm, is not at this angle here, it's more down. So from this position, I look, place the foot. As I turn, that blocking action comes across. Good. Now, the hand the right hand winds up and strikes around. Make sure when you strike that the arm is here. Don't have your arm straight. You won't be able to swing it properly. But we don't want it too bent either. We won't be able to get sufficient force and speed. Okay, so from this position here, let's have a look at that when I put it all together. So look. Place the foot, block, and strike. Good. Then, of course, from there, we, we kick, move into Korsodachi, and strike for a kick. Okay, so that movement from there, that nice, strong okay there, together with that strike there, and a strong Zen Kutsudachi. Get you to practice that 10, 15, 20 times. Go. Okay, the final movement, well not the final movement in Finan Yonda, but the final movement that we'll look at in the kata today, is just the movement from cat stance and towards the end of the kata where we reach forward with the hands. In terms of the, the application of the movement, we're going from a defensive position where we've blocked and struck to the opponent's body is 
one possible interpretation and an interpretation of that movement that I particularly enjoy. So this, this, this movement here, rather than it being just a block, I like the idea of blocking with this hand and I'm actually striking, striking with this back hand. Okay, in some schools of thought are that this is purely a block. So this, this hand here is blocking and this hand is reinforcing that block. Okay, which is, as I, as I mentioned earlier, there's no right or wrong when it comes to these things. From that position there, I've blocked, in, the way I like to think about it, is I've blocked and I've struck to the opponent's, my opponent's body. As a result of that, particularly if I've struck into the lower part of the rib cage, I've brought their head forward. Now, because I've brought their head forward, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to slide into Senkutsudachi from the Gwashtach, and I'm going to grab a hold of their head. Quite brutal stuff. And then of course, <laughs> we've got that knee strike, the his again. So, but when we clean that up for the performance of the kata, there's all sorts of different things that people do. Remember, in basically in Samurai, in the virtual dojo here in Chidoryu, we want to perform these movements a certain way. So let's have a look. So I've just blocked and struck, or, Perhaps your, your methodology is that you've blocked and supported that arm, which is fine. Neither, neither of those interpretations is incorrect. From this position here, I want you to slide forward in Zen Kutsudachi and simply, watch my hands and arms, I want you to simply reach forward. Don't do anything fancy with that. Um, in some styles, and not to denigrate or put anybody down, but we sometimes see things like this, you know, hands going around in movements like this. Um, when it comes to simple things like pinners, my philosophy is if you wouldn't do it in a real fight, if you wouldn't do it in a real fight, don't do it in your cutter. Okay, because um, I'm not talking about unsu, and I, I'm not talking about super empe and, and um, um, cutter like that. I'm talking about pinan yonder. Okay, so think about it. If I've just blocked and struck, I'm not going to make a flowery movement to grab someone's neck or head or ears or hair or whatever the case may be. What I'm going to do from this, this position here is I'm going to slide in and I'm going to grab that head. So when we slide and perform the cutter movement, we slide and just put the hands out like so. When you pull down, simply pull your hands down as you strike and move them out to an angle of roughly 45 degrees. Now, that's not because you smash their head on your knee and split it in half like, a, like an overripe melon. The reason is because after you strike with your knee, you let their head go. Okay, so we're letting their head go. And, that, and that's why our hands come apart. We're letting their head go. All right, I'll do that face in the camera for you. So from this position here, Nekoeshi uh, left leg forward, slide. Simply move the hands out and like so, knee comes up, hands apart. Okay, please practice that 10, 15, 20 times. And I'll see you back here. Okay, so now that we've completed work on those three elements or segments of Pinon Yondan, just a quick recap. So we looked at the turning action of that movement there, the beginning of the kata. We then looked at this action here and the striking, the Shuto striking action there. And then we finished up just now with this action from here, sliding forward, grabbing, and striking there. So they're just three elements of Pinan Yondan. So what's next? If you haven't learned the cutter itself, the sequence, what I'd like you to do now is practice Pinan Yondan five times. Making sure when you approach each element that we worked on, you slow down and demonstrate what we worked on, or demonstrate what you worked on. Now, 
For those of you who haven't learned Pinot Yondon, if we've got some novices out there maybe giving this session a bit of a go and you haven't learned Pinot Yondon, that's okay. You've now learned three elements of Pinot Yondon. So when it comes to learning Pinot Yondon in the future, down the track, you'll go, you've already got a bit of a head start. So those of you who have learned Pinot Yondon, excuse me, those of you who've learned Pinot Yondon, go through it five times now, the rest of you, Let's go on to the next section of training. Those of you practicing Pinon Yondan, see you in the next section. Awesome. Welcome back. So in this next section of training, we're going to do a bit of a review of some directional based uh, dodging movements that are useful for fighting. However, we're not going to be reviewing the basic set of movements that we teach at Samurai Karate and in the Samurai Virtual Dojo to our beginner students. Uh, so what I'm, what I'm talking about with those, let's say, more novice movements is movements such as dodging this way and then moving. Okay, dodging and then keeping our distance from our opponent. What we're going to look at is, though we'll be moving in pretty much similar directions, slightly more complex movements or alternate movements. Okay, so as opposed to just having eight potential movements that you can use to dodge, I'm going to do another eight now so that you'll end up with 16 movements. Okay, I'm going to perform the movements right leg forward so that you can follow along left leg forward as though you're working in a mirror. Well, if you've not learned these movements before, it's okay. I'm not going to go that quickly. The first set is simply going to be a review for those of you that already know them and a bit of teaching, guidance, practice, and learning for those of you who've not been through them before. Okay, so from this position here, quite a formal stance. Let's, let's not worry too much about bouncing and realism just yet. Movement number one, I'm going to step forward, changing legs, and then I'm going to slide back without changing legs. Okay, so I've completed a switch in that process. That was movement number one. I went forward, changing legs, and then back without. Now movement number two, I'm going to do that in reverse. I'm going to step backwards away from my opponent, changing legs, which changes the line, and then I'm going to slide forwards and I'm back to my original starting position. And that's movements number one and two. Let's review those again. So movement number one, step forwards and slide back, change hands without changing legs. Movement number two, step back, changing legs, slide forward, change hands, legs. We're gonna stay, well I'm gonna stay right leg forward for that one. All right, so that's movement number one and two. Movement number three, as the attack comes in, whatever it is, probably, probably linear, I'm going to cut my front foot off to this angle here. So I'm not moving sideways, remember. I'm actually moving forward at a 45 degree angle. All right, roughly. So, yeah, don't get your protractor out. So from here, I'm going to dodge this way as the technique goes past. Now, what I'm going to do from here is bring this back foot around and come in towards my opponent. Okay, and then I'm going to come back to my starting position. So watch that again. I cut, there's the dodge. There's the dodge. I now need to reposition my body to effectively counter or continue. So from here, I've got two options. I can circle this way and stay a little bit further away from my opponent. Or, after that dodge, I can slide back in, which is what I'm going to do in this more advanced uh, set of movement here. This, what we call this, this next set, this second set. Well, some of you may know this as the third set. Okay, from here. So let's look at that in total. So from here, I dodge by cutting and then come back in. Excellent, if you like, pause the video there and do that a number of times. Anyway, I'm gonna move on to number four. So movement number four, 
Okay, the easiest way to get out of the way backwards at an angle is simply to slide this back foot. We're going to try something a little bit trickier. We're going to move our front foot and pivot on this back foot. So watch. I'm going to move, break my weight over that back leg and then very quickly move that front leg all the way back. I'm going to end up facing 45 degrees this way. All right, so from this position, okay, I'm going to break the weight over the back leg and then move. Try not to make too big a circle. Remember, eventually we want to use these movements to actually dodge technique. And if you make a gigantic circle like this, you're never going to get out of the way in time. So back and then slide this foot through and turn your body to that angle. And then come back. Again, if you want to pause the video there and practice that a few times, um, that's highly recommended. Anyway, moving on to number five now, similar to number three, what we're going to initiate with this back foot. So as the attack comes in, in number three, we cut, or we dodged this way. In number five, we're going to cut the other way. So here comes the attack. This way, I'm going to cut and let it go through that way. As I did with number three, I'm now going to close the gap. Here, I'm going to move back in towards my opponent. So let's look at that again. So back to my starting position. From here, I'm going to dodge, dodge out this way. Then my rear foot is going to come back in that way. Look at that one more time. So step, dodge, rear foot comes back in. Good idea to pause there and complete that a number of times. Off you go. Excellent, okay. Movement number six, we're going to dodge back. And simply by moving our back foot. So I'm gonna perform a quick pivot on the spot and move just off the line. So as you can see in the background here, I've got the, I've got the Dojo Cream just behind me. I'll put my head just on the, on the edge of it there. Okay, so imagine that's the line, the line of the attack. I don't want to turn like this and stay on the line when we get hit. So from here, what I want to do is dodge back that way. So it's a very quick, short action that way. So just my back leg, in this case, because I'm working right leg forward, my left leg is just going to come back around. It's gonna to move to the right, to my right, that way. And I'm gonna move off the line that way. Like so. All right, get a few reps of that one. Number seven and eight are quite interesting. So, Movement number seven, we're going to come forward again, but then move to the side. So we're going to come forward towards the attack, <laughs> a little scary, but then we're going to cut laterally. We're going to move to the side. So we're going to look like we're coming towards the attack to meet it. Just as it's about to hit us, we're going to cut to the side. Okay, now there's no, there's no formal position when you cut to the side. So, um, from here, you don't have to move up and come into Haikodachi. Remember, these movements are designed for Kumite. Okay, so we don't really use Haikodachi when we're doing Kumite. I mean, I don't know the last time you saw any black belt sparring in, sparring in Haikodachi, but you know, I've never seen it. So, from here, we move forward, forward, the back foot comes up, and then we cut across. So quite often when you see good fighters, particularly at WKF level, cut and dodge this way and then pick up and get techniques like Uramosh and Washigeri or Yokogeri, sidekick, stuff like that, it's usually off the back of a movement like this. Because what they're doing is they're dodging this way and getting their weight on this leg. Okay, now you can also load the leg up and come back with the hand. 
But like I said, you'll see good fighters quite often kick Uru Washigeri as a counter on that movement. So let's have a look at that movement. So this back foot comes up and then I move laterally with my weight predominantly shifting towards that leg. And that's the dodge, that's number seven. Number eight is the opposite. We go back with this front leg, we go back, so we draw the attack, we move back and then we cut laterally the other way. So as you can see, I've now shifted my weight to this leg, ready for countering on this leg or on this side. Okay, let's look at that one more time. So from here, I shift back. I shift back and then I move laterally that way. Very good. So that's movement number eight. Get you to practice that one a few times. Then we'll do a review of all eight. Excellent, good job guys. Let's review all eight now, one after the other. With me counting, we'll do three escalating sets. First set slow, second set a little bit uh, quicker, and then the third set will add a little bit more speed, a little bit less gap between the counts. Here we go. Starting with movement number one. Edge, forward, and slide back, good. Number two, knee, back, and forward. Number three. Sun, lunge, and back in. Number four, yo. Number five, go. Cut laterally with that step, and back in. Good. One, two, good. Number six, roll. Good. Number seven, now we're up to our lateral movements now. Nana. Forward, cross, and back. And number eight, hut, back, cut laterally the other way. Well done. All right, a little bit sharper now, and I won't explain each movement as we do it. Here we go. Itch. Knee. Sun. Yon. Excellent, how'd you go? Feel free to practice that another huh, X number of times. Do another five sets of that, 10 sets, whatever the case may be. More practice, better you'll get when your dojo reopens or when you get to sparring with someone and you can practice those movements against, you know, particularly linear attacks. But that's, that's some more directional movements for you guys to practice. Awesome stuff. See you back here shortly for the next section. Awesome. Okay, so a little bit of a combination. Let's do a little bit of a combination review now, some legacy combinations. Specifically 5A, 5B, 5C and 5D. Just because we've spent the last couple of weeks, a little bit of time in each of our sessions working on and looking at Mawashi Gary. So 5A and B, of course, uh, feature my Gary or different uh, form of migrant, front leg migrant. Um, but 5C and 5D feature more washy gary. So let's just do a quick combination review. By the way, if you just want to look at the combinations really quickly without the whole review thing, I'll pop a link to the, um, the 5A, B, C and D legacy video uh, down in the description below. All right, so 5A, of course, is Step up for more novice students. Kick front leg, my Gary. Land forward. Gakuzuki thrust. And Sudiyashi back. I talked about last week 
And I have talked about previously not bringing your feet together when you move back. Okay, number one, it's not exactly ideal when you're moving, you're fighting. And number two, it's a little lazy as well. Okay, so from here, make sure you're using a proper sudiyashi movement back there. Okay, I think Sensei Kimura would be pretty happy if you were doing that because it's efficient, it's sharp, it's, it's smart. Okay, so 5A, slide up, kick, land, punch thrust, and back. Now, if you're a little bit more advanced, get a little, get a little hop or a skip there and an okuri movement. So, that way there, so just that little hopping action there. So that that kick is happening a little quicker. Punch thrust and slide back. Of course, more advanced students, you can play with that movement. So you might, you might rock back defensively as the person comes in and kick that way and then come back in and punch. Okay, you might drift forward a little bit. So you might pick up and drift forward. So from here, kick, pull, bit of a hop forward there and go. But that's more of an advanced thing. Okay, so once we've scaffolded and, and developed our technique to an appropriate level, there's all sorts of things we can do with these combos. All right, so that's 5A. 5B, we're going to initiate with a punch, remember? So 5B, we're going to punch first. Now obviously, that punch is designed to distract our opponent away from the kick. Give our kick more chance of landing. So we're going to punch and then, let's look at that scaffolding or that escalation again. So at a beginner level, a novice level, we're sliding up into the kick and the punch. Okay, at a more intermediate level, after you throw that punch, you're going to get that okuri action. You're going to skip into the kick and then punch. So the difference, obviously, between 5B and 5A is that, is that punch in the beginning. So 5A, there's no punch there in the beginning. It's just lead out with the kick. 5B, we're using that punch to distract our opponent. So from here, thinking about what I said before for more advanced practitioners, if I punch and they move towards me, covering my punch, moving in, then I could move back and kick. Not that that's ideal, but... <laughs> Okay, if they're fleeing, I can punch and then from there, you know, make quite a large drifting, sliding action, etc, etc. Okay, so just some practice and review now of your 5B. Okay, away you go. With 5C, front leg washing area, the combination itself Tactically, is not that different to 5A. We're leading with a kick, following with a punch. The difference tactically is circular versus linear kick. So 5A, linear, or kick that's coming straight on, as opposed to circular, washi gary. So from here, bang, that way. Okay, so, oh, what was I gonna say? Um, same escalation as before, so novices step or, or slide up, then kick, then land and punch. Huh? More intermediate students get that little hop, that little okuri action there. More advanced students, really brown and black belts, play around with the way you kick and move. Okay, sometimes rock back and just, you know, from here, just rock back and pick up the leg. Okay, shift back and pick up the leg. Okay, uh, pick up the leg and drift forward and kick. Drift forward, that way, etc., etc. Follow with that punch. So remember, 5C, front leg or washing area, and get the ski, and back. All right, don't forget, Suyashi back. Not this, yeah? All right, go, go, go. Practice that one. Okay. 
course, I'm assuming that you're pausing it and practicing it, or you're just watching this review and then you're going to practice. So I'll move on to 5D. So 5D, um, I won't go into too much explanation about why this is quite a bit different from the others. Not today anyway, I might do that in the library, in the Samurai Virtual Dojo study or library in an upcoming video. All right, so 5D, we're starting with a one leg punch. Step forward into a rear leg washigiri, land and finish with a front hand hurricane. Thrust, step back one, two, reset the hands. Um, I often get asked, is there a punch at the end? Um, I don't know, is there? Did you do one? If you did one, there is. If you didn't, there isn't. <laughs> okay, um, I can't conjure up. No, I literally cannot conjure up the ghost of Kimura Sensei and say to him, Sensei, should there be a punch there? I mean, there'll be Shukakai people um, around the world. I say Shukakai. Um, because uh, Kimura Sensei was a student of Tani Sensei's, um, who will say, oh, I, I trained with Kimura Sensei and he did a punch there. And then there'll be people like, no, 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 I trained with Kimura Sensei and there wasn't a punch there. The fact is, the fact is, what I, what I love about, what I love about Kimura Sensei is that he was, he was a scientist. Uh, let me clarify that statement. He was a scientist with his karate. He liked experimenting. Okay, so he would try something and he would show it to people and he'd go, hey, I'm working on this. Okay, the problem was a lot of people then, because he was so technically amazing, people thought that that was the gospel. Maybe a little bit like Bruce Lee. So if Bruce Lee said, uh, nunchucks, nunchucks are used to flick cigarettes out of people's mouths. People, people, uh, there's a certain um, percentage of people who believe that that's what Nunchuck were for. Okay, and then there's a quite, I would think, a quite a large percentage of the population that would look at a video of him using Nunchuck to flick cigarettes out of people's mouths and go, "That's a that's an awesome demonstration of skill. It's not an application for <laughs> that weapon." And it's the same with Kimura Sensei. You know, he said a lot of things like, "You should try this. You should try that." Etc. Etc. I'm working on this, and people went, "Oh, okay, that's something to experiment with." And others went, "No, no, that's that's absolutely 100% the way that it's got to be." All right. So, can you put a punch on the end of 5D? Yes. Okay. Do you need to put a punch on the end of 5D? No. Okay. When you're sparring, it depends on what you need. So let's review that 5D one more time. Okay, so one leg punch, step through, change hands. Rear leg will wash your Gary land. Uriken with the front hand. <laughs> punch, don't punch, thrust, whatever. Step back twice. Okay, guys, so there's your 5A, B, C, and D. All right, do the recommended number of reps for you. So, uh, I'd say maybe five reps left, five reps right leg forward of each combination. If you want a bit more of a workout, push yourself harder, go faster, and do 10 on each side. Go, go, go. Awesome, so to finish our session today, we're going to, we're going to combine a couple of elements. Now, if I was teaching this class to a live group of students in the dojo, what we would do now is we would pair up we would have one person practicing combination 5A, B, C, and D, very relaxed, almost robotically, with a partner, you know, kicking. And we would get the other person to practice the more advanced dodging movements because they work really well against the front kick and a punch. So as you as as I come in towards you kicking like that and punching you can practice your directional movement. So you can practice dodging and then coming back in and, and hitting. So that's what we would do now. But today we're in the virtual dojo. We don't have partners. So what are we gonna do? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw 5A, 5B and 5C a few times at the camera. And you can use that for a little bit of, I guess, incentive just to move and practice your dodging movements 
bit more, um, with a bit more of a, a kumite sort of feeling. Now, some of you are sitting out there groaning, going, ah, oh, that's a bit cheesy, Sensei Craig. You don't have to do this. What I'll get you to do, just to finish the session, is some, just some shadow spiring and moving and throwing some techniques and practicing dodging. For those of you out there with a punching bag, a heavy bag or something like that, get on the bag for a few minutes, you know, do a, do a bit of work on the bag with your gloves. Anyway, without further ado, I'm going to throw some techniques now. So we're moving around, that way, good. Remember to maintain distance. So if I move back, you've got to move in. If I come forward, that's it, you've got to move back a little bit. You always want to be maintaining that safe distance between the two of us. Because remember, you're acting more defensively at the moment. This is the drill. All right, so I'm gonna go with 5A, here I come. So, 5A, skip, kick, and punch, good. So, obviously movement number one is probably not the best movement to do there. All right, here I come with 5B, so I'm gonna launch with the punch, here I come. So, punch, kick, punch, good, and dodge out of the way. Move, move. All right, five C's to be a front leg launching here. Here I go. So you're gonna want more of a, one of these angular dodges now to cut off the line. Here we go. Or a lateral movement would work well here. Maybe uh, seven or eight. Here we go. And boom, moshi and yakusuki, good. Let's do that again, five eight. So linear kick and one, two, good. All right, see what I did there? I just noticed it. Yeah, I kicked, boom, and really lazily I moved my front foot. Bad sensei. Let's do that one again. My bad. Here I am lecturing you earlier not to do that, and I went and did it. Deary me. Self awareness is really critical. Okay, so from here, here I come. 5 8 again, that front kick. Dodge, go! Boom! And. <laughs> All right, 5B, here comes the punch, ready, dodge, now, boom, boom, that's it, good. 5C, one more, washy. Very right, nice, good, okay. So like I said, do a bit of dodging, a little bit of practice there. Uh, if you like, finish on, the, um, finish on the punching bag, if you've got one, finish on the tether ball, if you've got one of those. Fantastic stuff. Okay guys, that'll do it for our intermediate training session today. Thanks so much for joining me, Sensei Craig, in the Samurai Virtual Dojo. It's been an absolute pleasure to train with you again. Hope you've enjoyed the session. A bit of work on pin and yon done, uh, a little bit of directional movement, maybe learn some new dodging actions today that you didn't know before. Uh, some combination review, 5A, B, C and D, and a little bit of, little bit of movement practice at the end there. Or hope, maybe you finish with a bit of bag work. Make sure you've got some good training tools at home. You know, maybe you need a bit of tube work at the end there, or whatever the case may be. Anyway, don't forget, if you haven't already, I know a lot of you have, and you're sick of me saying it, but if you haven't already, please subscribe uh, to our channel. Uh, so that we can keep producing uh, good content for you, more subscribers, more content. Uh, give us a like for this video, and any comments, questions, leave them in the comments section below. Okay. Otagani, right? Os. See you next time, guys. Ciao.